Well, welcome, everybody. Come on in, gather around, grab a seat, because today we are talking about one of my favorite things in the world, Xamarin Cognitive Services. We're at one of my favorite places in the world. So excited to be here. So thanks for joining me today. And we're actually going to jump straight into a demo. So I need a quick show of hands. I need a, two volunteers. Who here has had an awesome time at Build? Who wants to come up and help me show off the amazing Cognitive Services? There we go. We got one in the back and another one. Come on down, guys. Let's give them a hand. Thanks for volunteering for something you have no idea what you're getting into. Hey, well, what's your name? David. David. Nice to meet you, David. Raymond. Raymond. Hey. Thanks for coming down. I'll actually have you guys join me over here by the computer because we are going to have a little competition. All right. There we go. That's right. So we have Raymond, if I can spell it right, Ray, Mund, and David. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and tap start. Raymond, you can take the phone. Yeah. And I'll come out in here and narrate for everybody in the crowd. So what we have here is an app called FaceOff. And what Raymond and David had done, they volunteered to go head to head to see who can make an emotion best. So, Raymond, you are player one. At the top of the screen, we have fear. So go ahead and tap that take photo button and take the most scared looking selfie you've ever had. Yep, go ahead and say use photo. And let's see what you get. OK, 10%, not too bad. Actually, David, before you take a photo, let's tap on his score right there. Let's see how it broke it down. All right, how'd you, Raymond? A little bit of neutral, a little bit of everything. Ray Raymond's a jack of all trades. OK, go ahead and tap OK. David, you're up. It's, that looks pretty good. Zero percent. Oh, David, what'd you do? Uh, tap, on, tap on that button. Let's see what you got. That's, that's David's happy face. 75% happiness. Okay, I'll tell you what. You guys didn't know what you were getting into. Let's call that a practice round. Go ahead and tap OK. Let's tap Reset. This one's for all the marbles. This is for the Build 2018 Face-Off Champion. Raymond, let's kick it off. <laughs> Looking good. Seven. Oh. You know, it's, it's okay. It's not zero. It's not 100. Kind of neutral. Okay. All right, David, let's, let's see what you got. For all the marbles, the grand champion. Zero percent. Oh, no. Neutral and happy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Raymond is our face-off champion. Let's give these guys a hand. Thank you so much. Go ahead and grab a seat, guys. Thanks for helping me out today. So, let's get the slides back up there. There we go. So, right, we're talking, we're talking about Cognitive Service today. This was an app that I made. It's all open source in GitHub, made using Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. If you haven't already, take out your phone, grab a picture of this link, It'll be at the bottom of most of the slides. That link will take you to a page where you can download all the samples we're going to be playing around with today. There's links to all the documentation on cognitive services. And even just for coming, you can get a free $200 credit. Did I get you? All right. But seriously, there's a free $200 credit in there. So let's jump into it. Now, I wrote every line of code in that app, but I know nothing about machine learning and artificial intelligence. And the reason is machine learning is hard, right? Who, who here considers himself a machine learning expert? No one. Yeah, me neither. It's really hard. People get PhDs. People spend years in school. You got to build algorithms. I don't even know what that means. I just like making apps. So, so how did we do this? How, how was I able to use 
facial recognition and motion detection in my app without knowing anything about AI? I use the Face API for Microsoft Cognitive Services. So the Face API, it's literally just, it's just a REST API. I upload a photo, and it sends me back these results. So in this case, what we get, facial face detection, it'll let me know where every face was detected in a photo and give me the locations of each face in the photo. And along with that, we get our emotion scores. So all I had to do was upload a photo to the cloud, and I get all this data back. And if you look closely, these scores, they actually all add up to one, or what I like to call 100%. And these are technically what the smart people that do machine learning call confidence intervals. But I just call them percentages, so roll with me on that. And if you look closely, we have kind of e to the negative eighth. If you remember algebra days, that's times 10 to the negative eighth. So that's a really tiny score. Not a whole lot of anger in this photo. But down at the bottom, 0.995 for surprise, 99.5%. Yeah, I think they nailed it. So cognitive services, they're just REST APIs. Now, I know we don't have any machine learning experts here, but how many folks have hit a REST API before? Made a post request? Yeah, all of us, right? You're all now machine learning experts thanks to these cognitive services. There's a couple different categories. The way we break it up, we have vision. This is computer vision. So like we just did with FaceOff, detecting faces, detecting emotions, detecting things in a photo. Is there, is there a train in that picture? What's the color? Speech. We can take an audio file, and it'll convert it to text. It can do speaker recognition. So you can literally replace your login with some cool passphrase. Like, this is the future, right? <laughs> 10 years ago, movies used to have these. This was sci-fi movies where I could unlock a safe with some secret passphrase and it only recognized my voice. We can do that all on our apps right now. Language. Language is all about processing text. So what is the text talking about? What is the sentiment of the text? Knowledge takes that a step further. Knowledge lets us interact with chatbots. We can have natural language conversations. Search. I know we all use Bing. Right? We don't, because Google's better. But all the Bing capabilities are available through the Search API. So if you want to add custom search to your app, you can do that. If you just want to use the Bing spell checker, you can do that. And then labs there at the end, that's all the R&D stuff that's coming down the pike. And so I wish we had more time today, because these are so much fun. And there's so many of them. But what we're going to do, we're going to focus on one more. We're going to focus on the text analytics API. Who here has ever gotten an email from their boss like this? I hope you find time to actually get your reports done today. We've all been there. I see this email hit my inbox, and I freak out. I wonder, am I late? I thought the reports were due tomorrow. I thought I had more time. I, I know I've been busy, but what did I do wrong? And so. We, we can take advantage of this text analytics API and do some sentiment analysis on it. So what I did, I took this email from my boss, pushed it up to the cognitive services, and this is the score it came back. So right here, we see score 0.77, 77%. What does that mean? Well, in this case, 100% would have been the happiest thing you can think of. That's, we're talking mini horses, we're talking bunnies. 0%, whatever the opposite of mini horses and bunnies are. That's, that's mean, sad, unhappy. And 50% would be right around neutral. That'd be like, if we were talking, I said, the weather today is 64 degrees. It's not happy, but it's not sad. 50%. So what did I get back? I got 77.6%. My boss isn't mad at me. He's, he's a good guy, and I should have known that. He's just legitimately hoping that I was able to find the time, because you know, I've, been, I've been slammed. So I want to take this technology and roll it into an app, because I have, I have a problem that I want to solve. I, I like to wake up. I like to read the news in the morning. So what I did, I made, 
made an app that pulls down the top stories from Hacker News. If anybody hasn't heard of Hacker News, think of it as just a, a website where people can post links about tech articles. So read the latest, greatest tech. I love it. But the problem is not every story is happy. And if I read a story that's kind of sad, kind of angry, it ruins my day. So I don't want to read any sad stories anymore. So let's jump into some live code. Because you're going to help me today to update this app. So here's, here's the app I have right now. It's nothing fancy, but just like you would expect, there's all the articles from Hacker News. And I can click on any of these articles, and we can read more. So if we check out the code behind me, I've got my Visual Studio for Mac running. And we're going to be focusing on this method today. So this is execute refresh command. So if I put a breakpoint here and do a pull to refresh, well, actually, if I just go back to the previous page, it automatically refreshes. Boom. So we hit this breakpoint. So all this code does in this method is pulls down the top 20 stories and then pushes them to the UI on the screen. So what I've done, just in the sake of time, I went ahead and downloaded this NuGet package. Let's give a little, a little zoom there for the folks in the back. So we have the Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services language NuGet package. And then I also went to the Azure portal, got myself an API key. And let's check out how easy this is now to add Cognitive Services to our app. So with, with this NuGet package, I can create a API client. And in there, we just have to specify a couple things. So one being the, oh, got to new it up. There we go. So we specify the region. And in this case, the service I spun up was in the West. And we also have to specify our subscription key. So our subscription key, there you go, is my sentiment key that I grabbed earlier today. Text Analytics API region, Azure region. All right. Cool. So now that we have this API client, we can start iterating through all the stories in the list. And I know what you're thinking. We should probably do it in parallel and make it faster and more performant. And technically, the text analytics API is just using an HTTP client under the hood. So we're supposed to reuse that too. But bear with me. This is just a quick demo. If you want to check out the, the completed product, it is in that, those links that we shared earlier today. So for now, let's, let's iterate through each story in the list. And the first thing we're going to create is called a, uh, a multi-language input. So let's create a language input, multi-language input. And if you couldn't guess, it's called multi-language input because we can use different languages. It doesn't just support English. But in this case, we are doing it in English. So I'll put in EN there for English. We give it a unique ID. The unique ID, I'm just going to hard code this as one. But we can also give it a unique ID. Say maybe we want to upload a book, right? We've scanned 300 pages from a book. We want to upload that, get all the results back. So we can give each page a unique ID. But since we're being lazy programmers and we're iterating through it one at a time, let's just hard code it as one. And then I'm going to pass in the story's title. OK, so we have our input. And now we can get the results. So if I say var results equals, and we're going to await our API client. And in here, it takes in a multi-language batch input. So that just needs a list of those multi-language inputs that we just created above. Let's grab that multi-language input. And there we go. So all I did was add this one language input into a multi-language batch input. We're calling sentiment async. And that's pretty much it. I've got the results back. So now I, I can take the results.
sign my sentiment score here. And the results come back with a list of documents. But since we're only doing one, I'm just going to grab the first one here and grab its score. All right. And let's compile it. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. All right, so it's loading. It's hitting the top stories. Then we're iterating through all those. And check that out. Now, I have a little emoji next to every single story. And let's zoom in here so we can see what some of the good ones are. So the top story right now, Google Duplex. That's happy. I can click on that. I can read it. I'm going to have a good day. If we go down the list, Task Warrior, nah. That's a sad emoji. I'm not going to read that. Maybe save that for later today. So with just a couple lines of code, what would you say? That's about 10 lines of code. We just added artificial intelligence to our apps. It is literally that easy. So like I said, there's so many more of these. And I wish we could show them all off today. But we've got to end soon, so we can't. So I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Please grab that link. That's actually. The more clicks I get on that link, the more my boss knows I did a good job. So whatever, whatever you do, don't create a bot that automatically hits that link a couple times a day, because that would be terrible. But in here, we have all the demos we checked out today, all the links to Cognitive Services, and a $200 Azure credit. Grab it, enjoy it, and thank you for coming out.